Welcome back. We are at Raise Up episode 18 and we're we're here with uh, Jessica and Justin Creech and we're going to dive into life, uh, work life, lifestyle uh, as a married couple who is navigating business and happiness and retirement goals for the future and juggling children that are still in high school and children that are grown and and children that have children and children that have yeah you guys are grandparents like grandparents we're grandparents you guys are grandparents like it's it's um so it's a whole new world now Mm -hmm. and figuring life out so yeah tell us thank you for having us (laughs) how are you guys doing you you were saying in episode 17 that you guys don't ever fight or like argue and so how how is that possible? Did you get it all out in the previous relationships, and now you're just like we're good? I think so. And um, uh, you know, uh, for me, I think it was aligning myself with somebody with like minded that we, uh, you know, we just get along, and she's very easygoing, and I can be a little extreme sometimes. So <laughs> she doesn't feed into me, and I, and I don't feed into her. And you know, um, if we ever do get frustrated, we just separate for a minute, and then boom, you know, we're we're back, you know loving each other again so that's a uh, um, pretty positive thing it's something that I've never experienced in a relationship prior to um, being married to Jessica and being with her but uh, yeah it's just wonderful it's everything Jessica. you could dream of yeah no it's it's very wonderful to have a partner that's just we stand side by side you know that's what you do with your partner nobody's in front or behind so that's what I I love about him you know we take on any challenge together you know, one of the things that I did notice when you guys first started dating was we were over at the house and you were like working in the yard alongside him doing things. And I just looked at that as such a positive aspect of, um, cause I didn't know you then, but I was just observing your behavior um, because I'm kind of weird like that. And I just watch <laughs> a lot of things. Uh, but I did notice that as it was like this very nice flowing, you were just coming alongside him in these like plans that he has to landscape the backyard and um that seems simple to some people but that translates into bigger things because how you are in the small things is practice for when shit hits the fan mm-hmm. really you know in my previous relationships uh our, my, my my girlfriends or even my ex-wife it was our relationship was ran more as a I guess a business you would say so there was a lot of expectation on what they expected of me to be doing every day and when Jessica and I first started dating I said you know I think that's the biggest relationship killer is expectations that one person has about the other person yeah so if you go into a relationship and you expect that person to be this person it's never going to work right and it just causes conflict constantly um so we went into this relationship. I went into this relationship. I can't speak for her with an open mind. And I, I think she did too, yeah. just because, you know, we did align with ourselves, but. Um, no expectations. Yeah. Can't have them. Don't expect me to do the dishes. You can ask me to do the dishes and I'll be happy to do them, but don't expect me to do these things. Right. <laughs> because Charlie, you can vouch for me oh. being a man, uh, male. I don't know if it's just something that bred into us, but we don't think of stuff all the time. Right. So if you just we do ex- think of things all the time, it's just not that. Just not that. that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So uh, you know, it's I, not bred into us. I think that is. I think that is a killer in a lot of relationships is that expectation part. So I think we expect our kids to know it, but we don't expect our I mean, spouses we do. to know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how they can keep filling it up until the the sink is over full. And then they're like, "Well, I never sell those dishes." I'm like, "You put them <laughs> or the trash, right?" Just yeah, keep and, on and, top. and yeah. that's that goes back to expectation, though. If yeah. You know, if you expect somebody to do it and they don't do it, that upsets you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, that happens a lot in relationships. Yeah. So learn to communicate and ask. You need help? I offer help all the time. If she tells me <laughs> no, remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I asked. I asked. You know, don't expect, but I will ask and I will help you with whatever it is you want me to do. I will do it. No questions asked. But... <laughs> Well, I think that's a refreshing answer. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's, 
it's way different from lower your expectations. Mm -hmm. It's more of this idea that it's like be grateful and have this yeah. attitude of I'm here, but I'm also not I'm not your minion. Correct. You know? And and that kind of places people in the proper balance here. Mm -hmm. And and then Jessica, how are you at receiving then? Because if he's offering, do you receive him always, or is it this this like I got it? I don't need your help. Most of the time, is I got it. <laughs> but yeah. sometimes, which you know, that's comes back. But he always asks. The, always. always. Yeah. You need help with the dishes. You need help doing whatever it is you're doing. Nope. I got it. Okay. I asked. Don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, I am here. That's what we are supposed to be, right? We're well, I partners. think sometimes that's all we need to hear, too, is somebody's willing to help. Yes, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you're not just sitting there watching TV and the other person's doing all the work. You're like, hey, do you want some help with it? I mean, I noticed myself doing a lot more with Athena um, that we were asking her. She was making dinner the other night, and I was asking her how we can do it. But then I came home and noticed the laundry wasn't done, and so I started knocking out the laundry, and I wasn't a big laundry person. And I was very fortunate. My wife used to do everything, you know, so I, I didn't yeah. really expect to just, you know, it's just like, you know, Somebody delivers a paper at six in the morning, and you look outside, you expect that paper to be out there at six in the morning. Yeah. You know, you're just looking, it's always done, you know? So it's just, I think we, we get in that pattern. <laughs> yeah, and it is. It's a pattern. There are so many patterns. I mean, Charlie and I, it's been 27 years now that we've been together, and I thought being a good wife and partner to him meant serving him in all of these ways. Mm -hmm. And that was just something that, Maybe it was something that was, um, it was like a sacrificial kind of a service though. It wasn't a healthy service. And as I grew older and matured, I realized that I really screwed myself, like really screwed myself because I was doing so many things. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because he was unwilling to help. It's just, I handled all of these things. And one day I just stopped handling like half of them. But I don't know that that was really the right answer either because um, then it was like the rug got ripped out, you know, and all of a sudden laundry <laughs> stacking up and, and this isn't happening now. And, and, you know, and he didn't actually come talk to me and go, hey, is there something I should know? He just was like, okay, I guess I'm doing this now. Yeah. And um, so you say experiments. That's, that's a. <laughs> so you, I'm the, I'm the guinea pig. I'm the, I'm the guinea pig of experiences that we just, uh, it's like, okay, we got a new experience going on in our life now. No he, more milk, no more cheese, no more, no more laundry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's probably the piece that we missed was um, I didn't know that I just wanted him, to, I just wanted to know him more deeply. I didn't want, it wasn't that I wanted him to, like do the dishes or whatever. I just wanted him to communicate to me in in a way that I, he was like, his heart was more open, I mm -hmm. guess. And so it was easier to fall into that space of just me doing my responsibilities and him doing his responsibilities. And I really felt like that created a lot of conflict between us because we didn't have the communication that you guys are speaking of. Yeah. Yeah, and, and going back on the expectation thing, and when I learned that was with when I was married in my previous marriage, um, I'd come home from work and it was always complaining, oh, you didn't do this, you didn't do this. So I started keeping a log. I kept a log for three months, every day. She had no idea that I kept a log of everything that I did from cutting the grass to mowing the yard, to sweeping the, just everything. And it was literally every day I was doing stuff. And, you know, we'd get in these arguments and I held it and I held it and held it. Finally, things blew up and I handed her my notebook and I said, here you go. You don't think I do anything? Here's the proof right here that you have this expectation that I wasn't doing anything. But in reality, I was doing things. So this is she you. She couldn't see it. Yes. She couldn't see it. Yeah, she couldn't see it. Well, it was easier to complain about it than it was. To, Correct. Yeah. You know. And I think was, I think we all get in that that mode. It's like if we're not getting something we want out of it, we're going to go ahead and complain about something that we don't have. Well, not not be happy about what we do have. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. you know, move that it's something you learn, right? Live and learn. And I learned, and uh, you know, brought that and moved that forward. And you know, that uh, Jessica aligned with me with all of it right off the bat. And you know, that's why I think we're successful today. Is... Well, we don't realize that we create momentum in whichever direction we choose. Correct. So we create momentum in this negative, 
unsatisfied or dissatisfied with your life perspective or you create momentum in seeing the things that make you happy that you enjoy that you're grateful for and it's really a practice mm -hmm. and you can you get to choose everybody on the planet has free will and gets to choose and i feel like there were seasons of our life especially where we just didn't believe we had a choice mm -hmm. and and um, i know for you like you started off with it wasn't just the tow truck responsibility you became a father at a young age and mm -hmm. you're you were knee deep in responsibility from then on out yes yeah I mean, a lot of pressure yeah raising kids 18 years old you know it was working 24 hours a day seven days a week it was tough 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 you know having a business you know where we were doing good and then of course in order to grow it costs money mm -hmm. so you dang near bankrupt the business in order to grow you know so you're just throwing everything out on the table going all right well how i hope this works you know <laughs> and you know so here we go again it was just it's it's been that my whole existence you know it's always been this big stress magnet of growing a business and it's tough and it's tough on your body tough on your heart tough just tough on everything you know but uh yeah it definitely definitely ride Whew, tell you well, you guys know all about it too though I mean, you've been through the ups and downs and ins and outs, and it's it's fun, but it's not that fun. <laughs> I feel like we're living our, our better life now than we are yes. we were before. I feel oh, like 100%. that we've, you know, you have that you have that black zone where you're making good money as a small company and you're doing well, and but that's your that's it. That's all you can go to. You mm -hmm. can only at six tow trucks or six employees. You only can tow so many vehicles. You can only work so many you people. A, you yeah, only, you hit a ceiling. You hit yep. a ceiling. So, as entrepreneurs, we don't want to have a ceiling. We want to have. We want to dedicate what our ceiling is. We want to be able to determine what our ceiling is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we were kind of at. And it was just a uh, same thing as you guys is just trying to figure out where that would be at. And it's a uh, it's been crazy, Curie. You know, I would say mm -hmm. that. Uh, Navigating parenthood with teenagers has also been another interesting challenge yeah. where you're like trying to shift from this like coaching space mm -hmm. while you're, uh, I mean, your teenager's looking at you and you run a multi million dollar organization and they don't trust you to pick them up from school, you know, yeah. or get that Pokemon card in the mail for them. Yeah. And it's Charlie like, questions Athena's ability to be able to send out. Mom, uh, are you sure you're going to do the that? Mail it, like, the right way. I can and we're totally at the post office this. and he's walking her through you. it. And I'm I thinking promise to myself, you. I'm the one who trained you, remember? Yes. Um, but yes. And so they have their own peace. And being parents is like, it can be you're navigating your personalities at work and you're navigating these humans that don't know how to regulate. And so one minute they're like moody and crazy and crying, the girls primarily. And the next minute they're like, I mean, the boys have their own thing, but have you guys figured out something with that? I mean, I know no. how Zoe's, is she turning 13? She's, she's 13. 14. She's 13 she's now. She's 14. Yeah. Oh, so. we've already dug deep into teenage oh, for the last oh. three years. Matter of fact, She's I say now we have existence. we have gone up to like a way better plateau than we've been at in a while. With Zoe? Yes. Oh, 100%. Yeah, she it does. has been a turn of a child and she it's does. pleasant right now. Good. Right now. Good luck with that. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to ride the so pleasant you're, train. You're on the first year of the uh, teenage years. An emotional <laughs> no, roller she's, coaster that I've she's never 13. experienced. I know, but it's been... Ever? Yeah. It, Ever. Yeah. I mean, my daughter Shelby, my oldest, she hated me for... She's an emotional person too. Holy moly! She made she hated me forever. <laughs> she, it really yeah. wasn't until probably five. When years I first ago, started coming yeah, around, five years ago, she really started coming back around. But you know, she she just she was on the hate train, and well, she yeah, was drinking yeah. the Kool Aid from the bad person. She was drinking Kool Aid from the bad person. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, it was still. It, uh, he's, it's it's crazy. It can these be kids grow challenging up. to watch them like eventually come to a place where they formulate their own ideas about yes. things. I remember my daughter a couple of years ago when the Roe v. Wade thing got switched over and she was like, I can't believe they're taking health care away from women. I'm like, Audra, don't believe the rhetoric. Like, mm -hmm. dig into it. All they did was they switched the power to the states and Correct. let the states decide. And if you live in a state that allows something and the state next to it doesn't, 
guess what? You can you move. Can go to the move. next day. Yeah, you can move. You can move. That's and right. And she was like, I go, but don't allow someone else's opinion of something to like create this like negative energy inside you. Like find out for yourself. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that might have been like one little glimpse where maybe I, re- I reached her for two minutes that, that time. But it's um, my, I, I, I've just always wanted to see them like grow up into these humans that are productive, but like living out the things that they really love. And mm-hmm. I think that that's the dream for a lot of parents who, who love their children. I, I don't. It's, it's, I don't really ever feel like I want to live vicariously through them in some kind of weird sport or whatever. I just want them to figure out what it is that, that lights their fire and like keep flaming, like fanning that flame. Keep I don't, fanning the flame, yeah. I don't know if they're living that life that we want to live through them right now. They're kind of in their own little thing and we're out. We're living our, our own life. And you're yeah, doing we're, having, we're, we're, yeah, we're taking off there. You know, it's so funny, is, you know, and I'm sure you guys see the same thing, but when you guys are... Um, when you're around, the kids will be in the room doing whatever, whatever else, and then you want to go to sleep, and all of a sudden they want to talk to you. Boom, they're in your room. So when like they're not there, or um, you <laughs> take them on vacation, and you go on vacation with them for a week or two, and then you come back, and then we take off to go to some trip, and they're like, "You're leaving us again?" I'm like, "We we just came back from Arizona with you guys for seven days. We talking about?" She's like, "But you're leaving without us." I'm like, "When we're around, you don't want to be around us, but when we're, we're not around, you're complaining that we're not around." So it's just. I think they're living vicariously through us more yeah. than they are. Oh, yeah. We are through them, and um, and I think what I was getting to earlier too, and I got kind of sidetracked is that that black area and now the gray area. Now we're finally in the green area where we're really making money. I mean, mm-hmm. we're doing good. We're 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 paying things off. We're we're in a place that we don't worry about what payroll is going to look like in two weeks because you know we got a quarter million dollar payroll coming out. Mm-hmm. We know that we're covered. We we have it, and we're we're in a more comfortable place. Now we're looking more. I think towards what our our end game plans like is you know what is what is uh, what's going to sustain us if we sell the company one day what what are we going to be doing buying real estate that's what yeah. we've been doing and doing stuff and I think that um, we we look towards that next thought and I know that you guys are looking the same way too and you know what do we do we are and uh, you know we're trying to figure out you know what is it you know I'm nine years older than than Jessica. Um, so I don't know if she's really quite ready to slow down. I feel like she's kind of on the ride with me, but um, you know, I'm ready to slow down for sure and start smelling the roses a little bit and go, all right, <laughs> we worked our butts off to get here. You, um, me, and Brent, I think we're all in the same kind of, yeah, we talk about that all yeah, the time. Yeah. And then my wife is eight years younger than I am. Yeah. You know, I'm not looking at it like it's a slow down because I always have like my own variety that I create in my life outside of whatever he's got going on. Yeah. So, He'll be relaxing in his massage chair, and I'll have my own schedule of things that create that yeah. variety, but we can come together. It's just when sometimes my schedule interferes with his leisure time, then it becomes a point Bullshit. of, um, like, well, what's going on here, you know? Man. But part of becoming accessible remotely like allows us to still go on and do things, and Correct. I can still maintain some of the stuff that I enjoy doing. And we're about to push that into high gear. Oh, I know quick. it's risky. It's risky. But but, uh, we're gonna. Uh, we've already we're gonna, like. We're gonna do we've it. We've already <laughs> pulled the trigger. There's no risk. I assure you, it's not. It's no. like. Um, Even for oh, I mean, you guys. The biggest thing, you know, we're getting ready to sell our house. It sure. goes on the market here on the on the 15th of July. Um, this is a house that you know I've been very passionate about. Yeah, you built I've a compound. It's like, ten years of building this place, and it's still a, building, still building. We're finishing up projects now. Finally, coming to an end. Yeah, um, don't worry. There's never an end. It's just no, the no, end of this project. It's just the end of this project. It is yes. the end of this project too. Um, Hopefully. But it is a surreal experience, and it's like, oh man, we're going to sell our house. We don't have anywhere else to go. So now we're trying to figure out, oh, what is our next move if this. Once this house gets listed, and you know, what if it sells in two days? And then now we're forty-five days out from closing. Now we got to get moved and moved out, and mm-hmm. this is going to be a real, for real deal. So, um, really looking forward to the experience this, this is going to give because I was born and raised here in Anchorage. I've lived on the east side of town my whole entire existence of life. I grew up on Turpin. I went to high school at Bartlett lived over on Turpin my whole life 
and uh, you know being able to just sell everything and pack up and move somewhere else is gonna, definitely going to be a crazy experience I tell you yeah and I don't know where that's all going to bring us if we're just we're just winging it and I think that's what makes life fun is when you have the ability just to wing it and just go it and do it you know and uh, we <laughs> buy a house down in Nevada Arizona Florida wherever it is we're going to land um I'm just looking forward to the experience. Is, is winging it cool with you, Jess? I wasn't at first, but the more I look at it now, it's like we can't make a change if we don't change. Sure. So same thing we talk about our company. Yeah. She, she got mad at me the other night. We were uh, we were out doing a project in the yard or something. It was like <laughs> eleven o'clock, and she, why would we start this project and not be able to finish it? Mm-hmm. One o'clock in the morning. At one o'clock, and I'm like, honey, you can't finish a project unless you start it. So it's got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> So, yeah. Just get it doesn't matter it if it was at 10 p.m. No, no, no. We just had to get it started. That way we make a mess. <laughs> it makes us easy, right? Yeah, yeah. Once but, you see uh, it started, we all have enough ADHA in us. So we're like, fuck, we got to finish this thing. I know. That's, yeah. and that's the way had, it is, too. I can't let this thing there. The completely emptied out, so it was all over the driveway. So I'm like, we got to get it. <laughs> we got to get back in there. You know, yeah. I think it's really interesting to hear that story of you've been in the same space, and that's been your your where you've, you've, you've lived and dwelled it's and it's zone. like, and um, I don't know if I've been like continually dragging him or if he's like a willing participant, <laughs> but I kind of have like this rule where we yeah. move like every five years. And the kids at first were, I felt like they were kind of trying to manipulate me a little bit to like make me, make them like, make me feel bad for them. I'm like, you guys live in amazing homes. Like, you have beautiful places that you live. We didn't move because of a bad circumstance. Like, we moved to a a nicer house with, um, you know, the ability to go through some of our clutter and not take some of that. And and it's like a fresh start Mm -hmm. and and this, like, um, new experience and... That's how I viewed that experience is it was like, I have these thoughts of all of these different places that we've lived and I, and I think about it, they, they've all been like this like great thing and it's not about, oh, my parents moved around a lot. Like you can look at it from two different places. You can look at it from, I maintained this level of normalcy and stability for myself mm-hmm. because everything else around me had, um, so much variety that I just needed one central space Mm -hmm. and now I feel like you guys have like connected together as as this unit of it doesn't matter where you live the center is here now correct Mm -hmm. and so the center is you two yeah Mm -hmm. yeah the the center is the two of you together and wherever you decide where you're sleeping is is like relative to that it's just Mm -hmm. logistics (laughs) feather float you just know it's going to be a comfortable bed you know there's going to be heat or air conditioning, Food. depending on what, you know, you're going to yeah. be able to pick whatever you want to eat, and you you just you're not sure if the dogs are going to be there at that particular moment, but yeah, um, you know that they will be eventually. I, I just know that you know the, there's seven hundred thousand people that live in Alaska, and there's three hundred million people that live down in the lower forty eight, maybe more, and you know <laughs> yeah. they live in beautiful places all over the place. There's opportunities everywhere. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I really enjoy the idea of just being fluent with it and just going with the flow of the motion and just let's see where it takes us. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? We move back. Change your mind. That's really the worst thing that yeah. could happen. I mean, yeah. we move back or we go on to the next destination. And, you know, the plane's always running back and forth here. You know, I come up here and work. Mm-hmm. For as long as I need to work, as long as we have just a home base here, I think it's going to work just fine. So, yep. so and in the market for a nice little condo. Um, so if you know any that are coming up for sale or any of that <laughs> stuff, you know, please let us know. Amen. So house is going up for sale, mm-hmm. and what's going on with the kids then, Zoe? What is she, she? I'll be up here two weeks at a time, two and two. Minimum, we'll be up here two and two. For now. For now. Yeah. She's expressed that she doesn't want to go, but I don't think she really realizes how serious it is. I mean, we've aligned with uh, with Matt, Zoe's dad. He's very supportive of us making a decision because he wants to move out too at some point. 
and um, so he wants your support that's, too at the same that's time. That's yeah. the key there 100%. is that yeah. you yes. guys are aligned. And we have with a him. great relationship, great yeah. parenting Good. relationship with Matt, and yeah, so it, that works out really great. So um, yeah, we'll see. Well, two weeks on, two weeks off. You know that might be a little tough, but we'll be able to do it for a little bit. But yeah, it'll be a little bit. It's just we're trying to, get... to really push her to homeschool. Um, but yeah, we'll see. You know, I feel like um, that is a space that my kids are finally realizing the truth about the decision to move them into the homeschooling program is they have so much more freedom to understand what it is that they want to do with their time and explore. And they are out of the, uh, the crisis of the morning mm -hmm. where it's just getting them up sometimes mm -hmm. it is like he made a comment one day um about did you wake up did you go poke the bear did you go poke the bear <laughs> <laughs> that would be audra because she is a bear to wake up in the morning she's like she just, leave me alone get out of my room i'm tired <laughs> and um and part of that is it's like she i didn't none of the, the kids really were meant to get up at six o'clock in the morning no. none of them were and no. um and so they're starting to see this like actually life is more calm life is more peaceful even if they choose to have like irritated moods there i can only imagine it would be like on t like on high the moods would be 10 times worse than they are now yeah. if they were constantly in this survival mode yeah and cramming for yeah, tests the, and the, the public school system is just i just feel it's just terrible it's pretty horrible right now it's, it is um, and definitely. it's not that we have bad teachers it's not no, that we have bad leaders no, it's just we are not prioritizing things and we have so many people that are involved that think they need to be involved in how we parent our kids and how we do things and how they think things should be done in the school district and they just need to get back to the basics. They need to get back to just teaching. Right. Not get into our social lives, not to get into what we think we should be doing. They should just need to go back and teach the kids. Well, I think part of that has come from some parents aren't parenting. They're, right. they're just dropping off their kids. Well, and you're right. And there's a lot of ones that don't. They, they just don't have that second parent. And they're trying to make ends meet being two two job mom, you know, trying to pay everything. So you're, you're right in that too. It's, it's tough all the way around, mm -hmm. but I think you you hit it it's like that without that piece we would not have the level of freedom that we have mm -hmm. yes because we would be held to kids getting behind in school and then that oh, dominoing that. and then the stress of all that and yeah. second um, grade teachers like i don't think it's a good idea that you take your kid out of school for a week while it's in session I'm like we're in second grade what, what are we learning here what's going on I mean, <laughs> we're going to thailand i'm sorry but we're leaving i mean we're, we're gonna go we're gonna yeah. take our kid to thailand with them they're gonna learn way much more there than they are yeah. they did hear about your math <laughs> and, and that's what we've been really trying to push to zoe we we went to uh, uh recently we just got back from myrtle beach okay by far one of the best experiences I ever had. I highly recommend you guys go on. We should take all the kids and go do it again. Yes. This next year. Was it like will, the motorhome at Disneyland? You, you will love it. Way better than Disneyland. Oh. Way better than Disneyland. By far. By far. Yeah. This place is just an amazing resort. And it's it's set up for the kids. Zoe didn't even want to come back to the motorhome. <laughs> she would get up. She'd get up at noon. You know, we just left her, whatever, you know, you sleep in, do whatever you want to do. And she'd get up and she went and met friends. Um, there's so many kids that are coming in and out of there. So many families traveling in there. They have the golf cart rally every night. And I mean, they literally and drive just, up like this and they all high five all the way down. And then they go like down the this highlight way. highlight of her life. For like four hours yeah, She loved night. it. She still talks to it. <laughs> they're, cru had, they're cruising the strip? She, yeah, they're cruising yeah, the strip. And yeah, lights. It was going lights. lights. <laughs> they had speakers on the back of them. They had blow up dolls on the top of them or blow up stuffed animals. I mean, it was just a really cool experience. I don't want to go to the really blow up doll ones. I'll go to the stuffed animals. It was not blow up dolls. This is in a bachelor party. Okay. I was like, what's going on here? Blow up What resort were you at? Whatever they are, you know, gorillas and octopuses, whatever. They had all of it, you know, and it was just a cool experience and i think it was really good for the for zoe and she met a lot of uh new friends that live in new york and oklahoma and uh, uh florida florida North Carolina. I mean, so, and she still talks to them you know, you know? And, and that's a great experience to be able to show her because now she can see that there's life outside of alaska and Correct. friends here too yeah. and you can yeah. meet other and people and she wants to go back next year so she can visit all her friends all right, that go. come there because they go there every year um, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to explain to her. I'm like, Zoe, there's places like this all over the United States. They do this. 
these little RV resorts and parks and stuff, yeah. they're all over the place. And, you know, that's it's, it's something pretty cool. And if we can get her to go and do the homeschool stuff, then we would be able to go experience She's all and do all that stuff. That's her dad. We have to yeah. get more. After July 8th, I think, is when we can go and talk to Frontier. So Good. Yeah, so we're Big Matt will come that. around too. Yeah, mm-hmm. especially if he wants to. Once you, once cons- you seize, I mean, once you get past the "I'm going to screw up my kid's life," correct. Once you get past that little fear, then the rest of it—that's his fear. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the normal fear that all. But that was parents- a fear that we had too. I mean, like high school life was—I don't think horrible. I, I like my high school life. I mean, yeah. Junior yeah. high was absolutely atrocious. Like, I felt like jun- Charlie had maybe a different experience, but most people that I met, junior high was like, oh, was awful. It's a tough. Most, yeah. Everybody's going through changes sure. in their lives. And, yeah. and, and young uh, girls are turning into ladies. And I mean, I get it. By the time boys you're are freshmen, boys. <laughs> boys are just boys. Yeah. yeah. We, don't, we don't change until no. we're in our 30s. So, no. Yeah. You know. Well, well 40s, 50s. I haven't even changed yet. <laughs> What's the matter with me, Charlie? <laughs> I think there's been quite a bit of change, (laughs) especially like looking at you guys. I mean, you have made a decision that you're not going to do things that like make your wife crazy. Mm -hmm. And you've made a decision that you're you're not going to do things that would um, be hurtful or disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And part of that is just aligning with this idea that, um, hey, we've got an agreement here. The agreement is is that we're going to honor each other in these various ways, and you just walk it out every day, absolutely. And I think that that's um, that's that's a beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah, and in the beginning of our relationship, we both agreed, you know, hey, we make it two years, and I think we can get married as long as everything goes good that first two years, and then we can look at it. And man, we hit that two year two year mark. We didn't look back. Oh, shit, like, I remember right. going to Vegas. This is it, baby. <laughs> Come on, Elvis. Elvis. Let's go. Yeah. Jess in her jumpsuit. You <laughs> sure? It's all of us there. We had the greatest time. We had a fun time. time. Then we went to what, what's and that guy's place? And it was during place? COVID. And it so was there was COVID. nobody there. Yeah. And they don't do it anymore either. Really? Uh, they're, nope. not doing, they're not doing Elvis anymore? Nope. Oh no! Well, they wow. weren't. I don't know if they I don't know if they are now, but they took it away because they are not they getting. They didn't have permission from yeah. the family to run Elvis weddings and stuff. Yeah, oh. something. Wow. So, I know that was I don't a think thing they have at one point, still. but I don't know if they do it anymore. Maybe they had to get permission or they have to pay a, a fee of or something or now. Whatever. Oh, yeah, to they use, want their royalties. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Elvis called yeah. Elvis. <laughs> I remember where did we go to dinner at? We went to that great place. What was that guy's? Um, uh, buddy. Buddy, buddies, buddies, buddies. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was buddy bees. That was a nice. fun weekend. That was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a fun weekend. Yeah. So back on the kids, though, you know, we're looking forward to the next chapter in that. Um, of course, my um, I got my two older, Shelby and Dakota. Yep. Shelby's <sighs> giving me two grandbabies now. Um, so we got uh, Gentry and 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 Magnolia. And, and, then, and what's that like for you now, now that you are like a grandfather? It is awesome, man. I love the kids. <laughs> I like every aspect of it. I like feeding them full of candy and then handing them back to her. And, you know, it's uh, that's like the best highlight of my life. Is, you know, oh, you want a popsicle? Here, take three. You know, <laughs> just you know, knowing that he's leaving at the end of the day. <laughs> he, he's leaving. But the other piece is, is, is that funny. it's like I look at those people and I'm like, there is no reason for resistance. Yeah. Like all, I, I, I hear the word no a lot around their parents, mm-hmm. you know, and I just hear, and I think to myself, oh my gosh, that's what I did. I, I, it's such I, a negative word. I, I had to, like, I, I, there's been plenty of things when I've been on the phone with my oldest and I'm just like, I'm really sorry, but you probably learned that from me. But let me tell you, this is how you fix it. And um, or and I, I think I've said that to him many times. I think you learned that from me. However, mm-hmm. um, and um, there was one really special little thing that my daughter texted me a picture of because I, I shared with him in my busyness with work. I mean, he was an only child for a long period of time. And I wanted to, I, I mean, I was the only one who was really giving him hugs mm-hmm. besides his grandmother when she would visit. And so I had to be really conscious uh, of that one. And boys tend to want to just pull away from you, you already anyway. Like I experienced that with our youngest boy. I'm like, dude, I'm the only one that really hugs you every single day. Like you have to receive a hug at least once a day, period. Mm-hmm. Like it's not up for discussion. Yeah. Um, and so he's like, okay, fine. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, well, don't make it weird. 
<laughs> yeah. and, and, there's one thing that I'd like to teach my grandchildren is, uh, you know, to, to love life and, and love hard and, yeah. uh, you know, be as positive as possible and yeah. never use the word hate. Um, we've really taught Zoe every time she says it or anybody else we hear say it, it's not hate. You don't hate anything. What you do is you dislike stuff. And, you know, if you hate, you, you can't say you hate going somewhere. It's just not. It's just such a it's negative a word. A word. It is, yeah. man. It's crazy, right? I dislike it, you know? And uh, that's how you express yourself. Or I don't love that yet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, um, I, I, when the kids ask me something or they even call my name, it's always yes. I say mm -hmm. the word yes instead of what. Yes. Because how many times can you hear the word yes? Like it's like. Please and thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, and just from when he does something, every single thing, I I really, I dial in on that and I'm like, thank you. Even mm -hmm. if he's driving his own children home, mm -hmm. I still, that's a chore thank sometimes. You, I'm like, thank, thank you for you. driving the kids. I, I always drive the driving. kids home. They always <laughs> want to ride with me. They always want to ride with me. You know why? I was like, you listen you to music loud? Or no, what? it's just. Yes, I, I, yeah. to all kinds of music, but they don't love it's my fun. podcasts <laughs> and audio books. And, <laughs> and, uh, I was yeah. like, why don't you guys ride with your mom? What's going on? She's like, we're with you, Dad. We're with you. We're with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. And then she gets all the free time on the way home. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, but I think that's part of you it. Just is that treasure that time, Charlie. I am. I am. He ain't gonna have it forever. No, no. Unless they start popping out grandbabies. Well, you know, know what? Or that you start paying more for more vacations. You know what that like? Yeah. Everybody will show up when you pay for a vacation. Yeah, yeah. that's true. They show Charlie, up in droves. This last Charlie. one was expensive. Uh, I know. Yeah, I know. We talked about that. I do there for a while. And we talked about you know we're doing that cruise and we're sending everybody on that cruise and we're doing that yeah. in October. So. All the grandchildren, too. all the children. And you're paying for all of it. Aunt and yeah. uncle. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. We've already we've already paid for the cousin. cruise. We've already paid for the airline tickets. We only thing we haven't we only thing we haven't paid for is our VRBO so far. We got a house all these people the day before because yep. you can't have like 16 that many of us. people where are you going to find a house for 16 people day of the cruise. our VRBO here is 16 people I wish we could take that and put that in LA for a day <laughs> yeah it's yeah, like $3,000 for one night we just uh, we just got through doing that whole same situation yeah Two cabins that's so funny yeah we were just talking about that then we had to rent then we had to Airbnb a, a beach house afterwards because their plane didn't leave for a couple days so then we had to house them while we left and feed them <laughs> and then yeah everything else so yep. now yep. they go There's over a here to the Airbnb cards. <laughs> and then it was yeah, off and rolling. Yep, we we Man. fully anticipate paying for memories, building memories. Hey, man. That's... Yeah. But you know what I think is awesome is that the we grandkids the get to see a different. Like I'm the same person that shows up at work that's with Audra and Charlie, mm -hmm. our youngest. But with the grandkids, like I, we we just we can just hang out. We can just do things. Like I mm -hmm. took my grandson fishing on um, on the pontoon boat. Right. Was that Saturday? Yep. And the they didn't want to go to the Scott Scottish Highland Fair. I can't imagine why. <laughs> Such a guys run around a kilt. <laughs> but yeah, the the two of them didn't want to go, and so they just hung out. And he was like, "I just want to fish." She's five years old. I just want to fish. Will you show me how to fish? Heck yeah! And that kid had an attention span that I couldn't believe for just like reeling in that that rod, and that was just fun for him little Charlie yeah. likes that too yeah little Charlie likes to fish too but it's That's really cool. it's showing them this possibility of wow one day I can you know live by water one mm -hmm. day I can do this I can do that I feel like there's so many people that are just telling these kids that um, you have to stay in this box and I want to light the box on fire so they'll run out yeah there's there's less parent involvement with their children nowadays too I mean, everybody's hustling, bustling, and working, and going home cooking. And you know, by the end of the day, what do you got? You know, you're We're going all to fun. bed, and then and these people just get in a cycle of doing the yep. same thing over and over. And I can't do it. I just can't do it, and drives yeah. me nuts. Well, yeah, we've done it. That's probably what makes me so but spontaneous. I think that the difference is we've done it. Yeah. it's not we can't do it. We just choose not to do it yeah. anymore. Yeah, because we've already been in that hustle. We've already yeah. been in that game, and we're just choosing not to. Again, letting ourselves be in the way of saying that we nobody else can do it besides us. Yeah. 
Yeah. And as we're now in our second half of our life, because uh, I don't think we're in the third part yet, or the fourth, I think we're in the second part, that we're just looking at this. I thought there was this. only like one half and then the other oh, half. Oh, shit, I'm, I'm, I'm spending I'm looking fours. for the third and fourth dimensions here. Uh, yeah. Man, I'm, <laughs> I'm at the halfway point there. But, you know, I just, I look at that and just say, hey, you know, we, we, yeah. we can choose now because we're in a yep. place. And I don't think our parents have those choices. I know my mom didn't. I, 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 I know that our parents didn't have some of those everybody choices. Everybody has the choice. Yeah, I think you have to put yourself in that mindset to get to that choice. And, yeah. and if you don't have the funds or you don't have the means or you don't have a partner or you don't have somebody else it makes it more difficult and it makes those achievable goals tougher mm -hmm. and uh i think that we've we've eliminated a lot of those obstacles in our life or at least we try to i i think you have to be open to realizing that maybe there's there's something else out there besides what i think is right like that's probably the first step is like yeah. opening up this idea because if you're always right then you know everything correct yeah Cups and always full. so then yeah. how how are you ever going to grow out of this space and i yeah. mean there's been plenty of times where uh it's been nice and comfortable to stay in one spot but i i never really i, I don't think that that I think everyone has equal opportunity with choice. It's mm -hmm. just because if it wasn't true, then how does somebody who grows up as a poor individual become a millionaire? Like they had mm -hmm. a choice. They There is like a series of choices that need to be made in order to move from this space to this space. But I think we all have the capability within us somewhere to make those choices. It's oh, just some choose this path and some choose this path. Yeah. And um, what I see, especially with you guys, is you're showing the kids, especially, that there's other paths. And Lots you, of other you paths. You don't have yeah. to. And and for the teenagers <laughs> especially, it's this, you, you get to choose. And you want to choose being grumpy in the morning or isolation or whatever. It's like, we're going to still be the example of joy and uh, variety and maybe one day you're going to look up and you're going to be like, wow, they're having way more fun than I am. Mm -hmm. Like, why? What an earlier age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I don't, I don't want to wait until I'm 70, 65 years old, 70 years old to do any of this stuff. It just doesn't make any sense why you want to go alive. not able to do as much either. Yeah. No, yeah. not at all. No, I mean, that's the majority of the people. They do. Yeah. They work their whole lives to get to the retirement age and then they retire. And I think... I read a stat the other day about males. I want to say they said the average lifespan of a male right now is like 68 years old. I think it's 74 is when I looked is up last year. And it went down a year and a half year because and they half. took the uh, they took the average of COVID and took all the people that oh. died in COVID. And I think it's 73 now or 72. So what's retirement age? Well, 65 is usually what people are saying. Well, that's when people collect security. That's when you security. collect Social Security. Correct. But then you see people do it. Yeah, you're right. It's not a whole lot of time from that time on. That you, you try to get to retired in yeah. your sixties, I mean seventies. I mean, <coughs> you retire and you and you and you stop working at at say sixty five, and then you live to be seventy three. Like sure. eight years, yeah. and you're gone. Yeah, you mean you had eight years to do whatever you wanted to do? That's it. Yeah. I, then you you're, had you're sixty five that you had to be yeah. trying to figure out how to hike up a mountain. Holy <laughs> mackerel! Are, are you safe for all this retirement? And then you only live for a couple of years? Yeah. Like, Man, that doesn't seem right. We got this backwards somehow. I, you're right. I always said that the best way to go is uh, be be your oldest and then work your way back, back into the womb. Yeah. <laughs> you go the backwards way. You be the oldest you are and then you get all that knowledge and come back and you're all the way to a baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so if I was going to boil down everything that you guys said, it's like the key is to choose somebody that you're in alignment with mm -hmm. and, and, and continue like making that decision every day that you're going to have this particular lifestyle. Yep. It's, it's, um, visualize it you, you, and just make it happen. It, it, it it's, I, I do think that visualization is a part of it, but it's mm -hmm. like you've decided I'm not doing this. Like Correct. you made a decision somewhere yes. that this isn't where I'm going to be anymore. And then you attracted, Jessica or Jessica attracted you because somewhere within you made a similar decision mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I'm going to be this person and in order to attract that person I have to show up as this person mm -hmm. and so it's almost like you create the peace in him that he creates in you yeah. 
That's cool. Yeah. Ying and yang. Ying and yang. <laughs> ying and yang. <laughs> That's the shirts you guys are going to get. Ying and yang. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got, uh, what's our ones from Disney World? Thing one, thing two, or no, what does it say? Yeah. On his thing and. On her thing. On her oh. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was at Disneyland, huh? The thing one, oh, thing okay. two. Yeah. There you go. Well, thank you guys for being thank the you guys. first couple to join us. No, thank yes. you. Hopefully that so funny, well. I told Jesse, yeah. he's like, how come you invited us? I'm like, you're the first couple we've invited. The first people in the businesses. <laughs> I'm like, man, we're on episode 18 already? Yeah. 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 Have to go on the podcast no, and see it. No, yes. appreciate it. And no, thank you guys. Hopefully some your insight. I'm sure that I... you've given some great insight to people who are like trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of couples that are trying to figure it out. Again. We don't have all the answers. We just know no. what works for us, and we just got to roll with it, you know. Yeah, and yeah. see sure. where life takes us. I don't know what else. Awesome. So thank, thank you. you, Paul Landis, for getting us all hooked up together. Yes. Thank, thank you, you, Paul. <laughs> thank you, Paul. You're my guy. All right. Bye.